Let's go, y'all. Everything around Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Arch Conversation Season 8.0. Uh, today, I have with me my really dear friend of longtime friend who's here for the second time because we didn't get the audio right the first time. I'm so sorry that you have to come back, Carrie, but also a good excuse to see her again. Yeah. This time, I gave her wine because the last time I gave her nothing. Having to come back again. Thanks. 2014, no less. Okay, so um, let's just dive into it. Carrie and I have been long-time friends. I think maybe 15 years. Yeah. Ish. So grew up together. I mean, she's much younger than me. But I uh, grew up together in a, a time bit. where we partied together, got to know mm. each other better through strife, struggles, and mm. then saw her blossom into this beautiful woman and why we want her here today. So Carrie, do you want to give us a, just a brief introduction of what you do, your day job, and your rest of the time job? Sure. So in my day job, um, I mainly help companies or ventures take their product and businesses from zero to one, so to go to market, uh, or help them through the scale-up phase. Um, but of course, uh, as you know, I love to spend a lot of time as well on projects or ventures that I personally believe in, uh, which either you know will give a lot of purpose or growth, or even if it just teaches us something, right? Me or us something. And of course, one of that, um, which is the closest to my heart, uh, is really you know something that I founded and um, uh, I've worked on since 2015, which is Sama Sama, uh, which is a nonprofit uh, that champions for the advocacy of migrant workers here in Singapore uh, to, and redefines the narrative of migrant workers as someone that we look up to, someone that we see as a key contributor to society. Um, and Essential workers. Exactly. Uh, and can also be a change maker uh, in Singapore as well. Nice. And I remember going to this, I think it was it first, <laughs> along Saligi Road. You guys rented out a space um, mm -hmm, and you mm -hmm. tied art to it. Yes, that was a really long time ago. That was for a bit of a different cause. But we launched officially in 2016 because it took us six months to set that up um, in a dorm. Actually, a Mandai dorm, uh, which was one of the bigger dorms in Singapore. Uh, thousands of beds and rooms. Uh, and there we had uh, invited 700 people uh, from the public. We managed to convince the dorm operators to let all of us in. Uh, and we held an art exhibit there, really. Uh, back then it was called the What Went Right campaign. Uh, and we took um, our visitors through uh, an, art, uh, an art exhibit, which told the stories of migrant workers, both sad and also empowering. Um, and also a short tour uh, around the dorm itself, the facilities, uh, and for some of the guests, the room. Although, you know, we did our best to keep the privacy for migrant workers as well. And we also just really threw a party there. Yeah, amazing, Carrie. So yeah. I want to know what's the name, what's the reason behind the name Sama Sama? So Sama Sama means same, same. Uh, and what we wanted to do uh, was to draw parallels between locals and migrants uh, to really show that at the core of it, we are pretty much human, we're pretty much alike. Um, and that is in a lot of things, right? Uh, it, in our personal lives, we strive to have a better life for ourselves. Uh, we like to learn, we like to grow, we like to make friends, you know, and we just want to do well, right? Um, and we want our family to be okay and we want them to be happy as well. Uh, so there are a lot of ways that, you know, we do this also in our programming. You will see that, for example, uh, when we have uh, volunteering opportunities uh, or workshops, we usually invite an equal ratio of local and migrant volunteers or participants to come. Um, and we always include a dialogue session there that's also curated uh, because sometimes uh, maybe some newcomers may not know what questions to ask, uh, but we also wanted to kind of take those questions to another level uh, to have more of these more de deeper, meaningful conversations with each other mm -hmm. great now why did you when you guys started this because i know you have a co-founder called kelvin. kelvin yeah so when really you good friend started this why migrant workers was there what was the pull well i think so kelvin the co-founder really good friend of mine had come to me uh, in 2015 and he said you know i wanted to do something great for the community, right, through art, because he's an artist. Uh, and at that time, uh, I was an HR consultant. I was a talent consultant. 
uh, and what that meant was I always have conversations about the people and the talent in your organizations and in this case migrant workers included. But I thought that some of the conversations that was happening in the boardrooms, uh, even though a compensation was fair and everything, but I think the perception of how migrant workers were looked at versus our local or expat talents was slightly different and that was unsettling to me. So I think we did more research on that uh, and we had connected to some of the uh, NGOs in Singapore uh, and we learned more about their issues, uh, which was a lot more than we expected it to be. And we decided, hey, you know what, uh, with the little that we have right now, let's contribute. And OK, so I was thinking, like, I know everybody thinks we're post-COVID right now. Everybody's going back to normal life. Um, mm -hmm. But I was thinking about micro workers through COVID. I mean, I'm in interior design, so I also work very closely with micro workers a lot of the time. Um, I was just thinking about their living quarters during COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. It must have been tough. Like even for us in a home setting, it's tough. So not to not to imagine being in a dorm with yeah. several people. So can you just talk a little bit about like how living how the living standards were then versus now? Is it any better? Has it improved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think many people would be surprised to know that not all migrant workers who are living at dorms are free to actually go out today as well. There is still a quota in place. Uh, they are still caring about COVID, although of course we have reached the progress that you know we are really happy about. Um, we all know that COVID you know, was spread in Singapore as well uh, because of the conditions of these dorms. Uh, they were crowded, there could be 16 people in one room, uh, and we're talking about maybe the bigger dorms here, and we still know, don't really know the conditions of the smaller dorms, right, which is not as regulated. So I think, you know, when COVID hit, it was, it, it was, of course, a difficult period, right? While we were in our, well, you know, apartments or even if we have... Learn how to function as families living as exactly. family in one house. Exactly. Finding that so difficult. Imagine. There were issues of, you know, access to basic needs even uh, for, some, for many living in the dawn, right? Especially when a lot of them relied on cooking, for example that was not available. Uh, medical support, which was needed, that was not immediately available. It took months to figure that out as well, right? Um, information communication did not get through. So we were relying on disparate, a lot of different you know, sources to let us know and let the dorms know and let the people know what was actually happening. We're talking about you know, hundreds and thousands of people here yep. uh, and only a handful of you know, non-profits or volunteers or NGOs. Uh, so that was, that was, of course, a really tough period. Now, it's going to take me a really long time to go through everything that has happened since then. But of course, there were waves of things that happened. What COVID did was expedite the issues of migrant workers. But what it also did was also highlight the issues of migrant workers to our community that maybe many people didn't know about. Yep. So, of course, I think with a lot of partnerships, with a lot of conversations through the two and a half till now, um, I would say that much has been, much has progressed, right? Yeah. I think firstly, there is that need or that acknowledgement that we need to know more about our migrant communities and our demographic. So that's one. I think let's start even with understanding mm -hmm. and then trying to find the right solutions, mm -hmm. which would also include how the next step is how the locals would think, right? How does social integration actually look like if we are indeed going to move in towards our residents? And I think that's where Sama Sama is trying to address as well, together with other of our partners and, of course, the other NGOs as well, right? How are we going to actually tackle that social issue of bringing the, all the communities together uh, to live in a, I guess, in a sustainable way? Is that your short-term goal? And how short would that, when I say short-term, it could take years, right? So is that your active, like what you guys are doing actively? Yeah, I think, you know, in the, the vision is really that, you know, migrant workers would have the equal opportunities as they would in Singapore. Opportunities meaning in terms of jobs, in terms of families, in terms of a lifestyle, so social mobility in that sense. Of course, in order to get there, we need to change the narrative by a lot. <laughs> when I say a lot, I, when you ask me what's short term, right, we set, the, we set this goal out years ago. And this is not something that we know, you know, will achieve in the next one or two years even. I think it's an ongoing discourse that we have to keep shaping and keep, you know, uh, talking about uh, with society. Um, so when I say short-term goal, I really think it's trying to find the strategic partners or communities that would be able to start accepting and welcoming some of these communities into, you know, their communities and I so on and so forth. I was just about to say um, that, like, I feel like 
people say social classes don't exist in Singapore and this and that, but I feel like mm. it's not very true. It's not true at all. In fact, um, it's not. Yeah. I like I said, I work quite closely with migrant workers, mm -hmm. um, and just like us, there are good eggs, there are bad eggs, there are neutral eggs, right? There are all kinds of eggs, and I feel like yeah. immediately people classify them as like beneath us, mm -hmm. which I feel like is so disgusting, especially in this country, in a first world country in the twenty first century, with yeah. multiracial with a multiracial society. So I think I'm gonna go to the CTA really real quick real soon for you if you guys want to help in any way with Carrie's cause um, but I also kind of want to mention like as individuals in a society functioning mm -hmm. as a society we're talking about the people who help build our buildings our homes mm -hmm. you know like do all the jobs that I you don't want to do yeah um, and they left their families to come here to, in order to do that and like she said give their families and themselves a better life Mm -hmm. In that regard, I feel like we should treat people with, with, with respect. Mm -hmm. And when I say with respect, all I mean is to smile. Yeah. It doesn't take a lot. And, and also, I wanted to add, um, when, we, when we say we want to see them as people, as humans, um, also not look uh, at the community uh, with a sympathetic lens. To also look at them as people who are contributors to the society. Yeah. Because when you can acknowledge someone as a hardworking peer, when you find out that your friend or your colleague uh, was mistreated, like many of, of them in the migrant community, you know, what would you do? And yeah. you can ask yourself that question. Yeah. Um, so I think it really starts with that mindset shift as well. Yeah. 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 Just that little shift in mindset to understand that they're not just human, they're like, I don't know how to say this. They're like an extension of mm -hmm. any organization. Basically. Yeah, and they're capable and they're talented and they are inspiring. Yeah. yeah. All right, Carrie, thanks for your time today again. I know that we've breezed through it this time. It's only because it's the second time we're going through everything again. A lot less hiccups. Mm -hmm. But what would the CTA be for you? Yeah, what so was, what is the CTA for? We anyone? have a couple of campaigns coming up mm -hmm. uh, in 2023, one of them being the Making Waves campaign, uh, where we transform certain migrant facilities like dorms and recreation centers uh, into art murals uh, and uh, opportunities for dialogue. Uh, so one of our campaigns which are coming up um, would be in both February uh, and also sometime in Labor Day as well. So there will be volunteer opportunities there. So if you want to reach out, uh, to find out more or, you know, ask about other just types of volunteers. Yeah, of ask anything, right? Because we also have all these programs coming up. Uh, you can just hit us up uh, at on Facebook at uh, Samasama SG. That's um, S-A-M-A-S-A-M-A. -A 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 that's right. That's right. one word. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool, Carrie. Cool. Is there anything you'd like to add? Some, like, personal stories that you've encountered, experience that really moved you? Because I remember the last time you hear you talk about your wedding, she just got married. Would would um not really just been girl. I mean it's just cool. <laughs> Anyways, so they just got married um officially. Mm -hmm. Um and they the micro workers threw you a party. Yeah, yeah, they did. Um yeah, so I, I was married and you know, the longest time they were like, We need to throw you a bridal shower. Uh in their, in their own culture. Exactly, yeah. right? Uh, with the Bangladeshi friends that I have. Uh and I wasn't expecting I didn't know what to expect. They just came over, they uh they they helped me get my sari, they got my makeup done, they got all my jewelry, they invited all our friends, they got a venue, and then they threw, you know, that bridal shower. Uh and uh, we had a whole ritual and I'm wondering it was really, if really was nice. part of this or do you know it's not it's like they was, yeah. it was <laughs> yeah. it was so he was really equally shocked. You were just there. And and his and his groomsmen were there as well and they were part of it. Uh, and it was so funny. The first thing we walk in, Matt's like, I see us on a banner. <laughs> you yeah. know, you know, and, and it was just set everything. They up. printed, yeah, they did everything up. They cut all the fruits and, we, and that was just one of the sweetest things that anyone has done for me, you know. And yeah, I'll, quite sweet, I think. I, I think, no, you have, you have, you have, but in the last seven months, um, six months? I would also agree because <laughs> when I work with migrant workers uh, and I bring my daughter to job sites a lot, they're actually really nice because I think they remind, they, she reminds them of their children. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they really spend the time to talk. I mean, with language barriers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And they know if she likes to draw, they start drawing with her. Yeah. They remember her name. They always come up and say, Hara, how are you? Yeah. And it's a lot more than what a lot of the 
Of course. Of course. What people do to be honest. Yeah, they have. They're very family oriented, and they always want you know every opportunity to share their culture with you or to share our culture. That. It's what means a lot to them, right? Yeah. Through music or through food, and um, or through I mean, I, I, they're also expats here, of learning course. our way of life. Exactly. And if they can inject any of their way of life here it, in a cultural sense, that's brilliant too. Yeah, yeah. All right, Carrie. Thanks for your time cool. today. Thank you. And I wish you a sama sama. Sama sama.